What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be talking about my favorite type of pistol, the 2011. And the reason why we're gonna be doing that is because of this gun right here that made 2011s popular again. We're also gonna be mentioning this gun as well, the gun that made 2011s popular two years ago. <laughs> so with the introduction of a couple of, I guess you could call them budget-minded 2011s, the Prodigy and the Staccato line, I think they have brought 2011s to a market that was never really using them before. 2011s have been around since around 2011, maybe a little bit before that, but with a double stack 1911 crowd. But they have used pretty much exclusively in competition up until the 2020s almost, where you started to see a lot of law enforcement, military, and civilian concealed carriers buying them. Uh, the reason why they're very popular is obvious. They're one of the fastest and most accurate platforms on the market. But along with a very old design that has been remade and reintroduced time and time again, you're gonna come across some issues that are holdovers from the original 1911 design and some new ones as well. So I wanted to talk about some unique problems that you might find with a 2011 if you've got a 2011 for the first time that you might not find if you are used to the striker-fired market. Now I'm not saying in any way that these, this makes the 2011 inferior, I'm just saying that every gun has pros and cons and with that speed and accuracy you are going to get some quirks. But first I do want to mention if you like these videos, if you like the non-biased content, we try to make gun videos for you guys, not for the industry. Because of that, we really appreciate your support on Patreon, we really appreciate Appreciate you liking and subscribing. If you want to subscribe on Patreon, all you got to do is go to the link in the description below that helps out the channel. If you don't want to do that, Super Thanks is all also available. It's YouTube's version, and we really appreciate that. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So please get onto that link, donate to those kids. And let's start out with the very first quirk that I see a lot that I've experienced in my life. And I've seen with a lot of people that are reviewing this, because the issue with the Springfield Prodigy is it comes in at around $1,500, and it brings the 2011 to a crowd that, again, as I said before, I've never had it before. So a lot of people don't know with a 2011 that what we have here is an exposed ejector. So you can see it pretty well in this one, maybe. It's this guy right here. So as you can see that, that's going to exist on the $1,500 Prodigy. That's going to exist on the Staccato series, and even on my $5,000 Ares, which I collaborated with Atlas Gunworks to make. Uh, this is my personal favorite gun, and I designed it, and I have put an enormous amount of rounds through it, and believe it or not, it still has the same problem. So if you run to slide lock in this 2011, you dump the mag, grab the magazine, and you just slam this magazine in as hard as you can, like you would a Glock or an M&P or something like that. What you're gonna do is smack it into the ejector, and it can cause a lot of problems. Uh, the first problem being your magazine's stuck. That's the most common one. That's the most common one I have. Uh, the second thing you can do is you can break that off, causing a essentially a complete failure of the system. Now, the easy way to fix that uh, usually what people do is preemptive reloads and you can reload with the slide forward and you usually don't have any of those issues. The other thing you have to do is uh, if you are gonna load the magazine with the slide lock to the rear, you want to get the magazine in there and stop just a second before you put it in there and get back on the gun. Now it doesn't take much, just a little bit more finesse and you won't have that issue. However, that is one of the main issues I've seen with 2011 people for the first time running one. Uh, I've actually seen a lot of people get their mag stuck and their gun doesn't work and they don't understand why the magazine won't come out or they break the ejector or they mash to the point where it no longer works and it no longer eject the rounds. Uh, so that was actually the reason why I made this video and then we came up with a bunch of other ones that we've seen during training classes, videos, things like that as well. So we'll get right into with number two and that's Bill Wilson's least favorite thing and that is going to be, I'm not gonna do it on this one. <laughs> That is going to be dropping the uh, slide on an empty chamber. If you slam the slide forward on an empty chamber, the round itself going into the chamber cushions the fall. So you can mess with the barrel lockup, ruin the barrel lockup, or you can mess with the sear engagement on the trigger and ruin your awesome trigger. Now, you can kind of mess up your sear engagement with that, and you can actually jack up your trigger. So one of the interesting things about that is people will go buy Wilson Combats, and they'll buy Staccatos, and all these things that have these really fine sear engagements and these custom-tuned triggers that give you the two and a half pound trigger everybody's looking for, but then they also want to have that Glock durability where you can drop it on an empty round, and you just can't have both, sadly. So I would recommend that if you're going to release your slide, 
you want to have a round in the chamber because it's not the same, you have to understand. Uh, it's a lot harder on the gun to drop it with an empty chamber. So if you're going to drop it with an empty chamber, I would recommend the pinch move and kind of sliding it forward, or I would recommend just grabbing the slide like this and riding it forward. That's what you try to do. It's going to help keep your trigger good longer and it's going to help keep your gun functioning longer. Third thing I run into a lot, grip safety not engaged. So one thing you have to understand is most 2011s still run the 1911 battery of arms. The only real difference with a 2011 and a 1911 is that A, Staccato has now pinned it. <laughs> so technically these are not 2011s even though they, they super are. Um, but the 2011 has a slide, a grip, and a frame. Uh, and the polymer frame on the staccatos, uh, aluminum and then steel, whereas this is steel, aluminum, aluminum, and then sometimes it's aluminum, steel, polymer. You, you just have three instead of two, whereas the 1911 just has a frame and a slide. That's the main difference. But all of them will have this grip safety here. And if you don't engage the grip safety when you pull the gun out of the holster and you don't have constant pressure on it, you see if I release the grip safety here, even though the manual safety is down, the trigger doesn't work. Now that may not seem like a problem until you're shooting in adverse conditions or you're shooting under a barricade or a car or in some situation where you're entangled. And trust me when I say this, it does happen. You pull your gun out and you don't have the perfect pressure. You see even right here, if you ride your thumb up higher like a more modern grip, you have a tendency to take pressure off that grip safety. That's why a lot of people have it pinned or even people like Adam over at Atlas Gunworks eliminate it completely. Part of that allows you to shoot essentially with impunity and not have to worry about it, but the biggest positive thing in my personal opinion is that you can get a higher ride on the gun and you can control the gun better without the grip safety. I mean, let's be honest, 1911s, 2011s, they already have a manual safety that you have to defeat, so I feel like there's no need, but keep in mind that if your gun does have that and you like that, make sure you build into the battery of arms when you draw that you want to depress that grip safety down. Now the second thing goes along with the first one is going to be building the manual safety into your battery of arms okay so if you build the manual safety in your battery of arms what you'll get is a recoil control device right so if i come out there i'm actually using my strong side thumb to press the gun down a little bit further and use it as a bit of a gas pedal now most people what they do is they press the, the safety down and then their thumb comes under like a striker fired grip the problem with that is is that you have a tendency under shooting to pop the manual safety back on so by riding it you get two things one you get that extra recoil control and two that safety is never going to come off when you don't want it to so personally i would recommend uh, building in that sweeping motion into your draw if you plan on carrying a 1911 or a 2011. Now another issue that we're going to talk about is the double fire issue. Now I do see this fairly frequently in matches and in training classes, especially with new shooters that are used to double action triggers, uh, revolvers, glocks, things with a longer trigger pull than a 1911 or a 2011, especially with a longer reset which really can be the issue. So the the best thing about the 1911-2011 is the trigger, the worst thing for new shooters sometimes is is also the trigger. So when we release here, as you can see here, not only do we have a crisp two and a half pound trigger pull, but the reset is unbelievably short, okay? Now I don't think some people are ready for that the first time they shoot it, is that the fact that trigger travel rearward and forward is very, very, very short, and it's easy to get those accidental double fires. And you're just gonna have to be careful with that and you're gonna have to understand the trigger's very, very short and work into it slow and get used to it, build it in your muscle memory, and then you can add speed. That's very important, building in good habits first before we start going fast. Another problem, magazine compatibility and interchangeability. So uh, different companies make different magazines, as I believe Duramag makes the Springfield mags. Staccato, in my opinion, makes the best mags. I think Staccato, honestly, coming out with their Gen 2 magazines is one of the reasons why the 2011 became so popular. 2011s have been known to be very finicky over the years, and I, specifically the Staccato pattern magazine fixed a lot of that, plus added a lock back when the last round was fired that was reliable and would work every time. So I like the Staccato mags, and generally if you use these, most 2011s will work great. Another magazine that I like a lot are gonna be the, what is it, the Magtech mags? I, I forget what those are. I, I, I'll mention it below, I like those as well. I have no experience with the Springfield mags yet, but I have heard that these have issues and that doesn't shock me because generally when something else comes out that's brand new, they need to be ironed out a little bit and the way the market is today, generally companies beta test them on their customers first. So sadly, the first people to get them are generally the people that have to tell them that they suck. There are plenty of different magazines, 
Some of them have lockbacks, some of them do not. Some of them are compatible with certain pattern handguns and some of them are not. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll check how fast we can run it. Maybe we will. Man, it really doesn't like these magazines. I think these magazines are what's going on. Yeah, it won't even run them. That's hmm. crazy. Magazine reliability issues are huge in the 2011, so I would absolutely spring for the more expensive and very durable magazines. It just makes sense, guys. It's like buying regular Glock mags instead of going with the Korean ones. Now, another thing I wanted to get into here is going to be relatively tricky takedown. So if you're used to a Glock or an M&P or even a Sig P320 where things are very simple, get used to complicating them a little bit with a 2011. Just the basic breaking down and cleaning of the 2011 is more difficult than a standard pistol, especially if it's got something like a Dawson toolless disassembly where you're going to need a paperclip style tool or something to take your guide rod out. You're definitely gonna need a YouTube video or two the first time to do that. Also, even just simple basic 2011 disassembly can be relatively difficult because you have to match up the uh, the actual takedown lever here with the spot on the other side. And then if you don't have a tool, a lot of times it's really hard to get out of there. So we pop our takedown lever out of there, we slide the assembly off, and then we have our recoil uh, guide rod system and everything, which is not captured like a standard Glock. And then we also have our barrel system here, which slides out generally from the front like that. And then when we put it back together, we have to align this little uh, knob here, or this little hole here, with the takedown pin when we put it back in. So a lot of times you actually have to reassemble it upside down. And sometimes even with people that are very, very used to it, it takes a lot of finicky uh, playing around with just to get it back together. So that's one thing to keep in mind that if you buy a 2011 for the first time, I would find a reputable video on takedown and cleaning and assembly because the next thing we're gonna be talking about here is gonna be the cleaning issues with the 2011. So people try to use 2011s like Glocks and it's just not the case. The tolerances are extremely tight. That allows for a very good accuracy and speed. Most of them are hand fitted, but the downside to that is going to be that they do require more lubricant. You're not gonna be able to shoot these 2000 rounds without lube. You 500 is about all you're gonna be able to get and you're gonna need a lot of lube and I like to clean mine every thousand or 2000 rounds as opposed to every two to 4000 rounds with my striker fired guns. So it requires about you know, four times as much lube and about twice as much cleaning as your standard striker fired gun. Now, pros and cons, obviously, a uh, little bit more maintenance equals a little bit more performance, but that's up to you. And if you're not the guy who wants to do a tricky takedown and lube a gun a lot and clean a gun a lot, and you're not a tinkerer or a, a guy that likes to take care of things, 2011s are probably not for you. I'd probably stick with a Glock. It's nothing against it, it's just personal preference. So overall, I think those are some of the downsides of a 2011 that most people don't know or don't think about before they get into it. They're not huge downsides. They're just simply small cons that you're gonna have to get used to over time. Obviously, the 2011 is my personal favorite platform, and so obviously all those things can be easily overcome, and then the benefits of the speed and accuracy, man, are really something to behold. Uh, that being said, you're gonna have to go through some of these things before you get there. It is what it is. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.